I am so blessed with this podcast. I get to speak to some amazing people and each week they seem to be getting better. This week I was chatting to the lovely Rachel Harris. Now Rachel Harris is growing her practice to be nearly a million pounds. She employs loads of people. She's got a waiting list of 99. 99 people want to work with her. Um, she does loads of social media. She's honest. She's out there. She does loads of stuff. She talks to lots of people. She gets involved in lots of podcasts and she cares about the accounting industry and young people like she was. So she's determined to be a role model for young women just like her and she is smashing out of the park. She's absolutely delightful. She knows her onions and she also knows accounting and she totally knows social media. So just jump in and listen to this episode. Rachel was so good. I've asked her back and I cannot wait to delve in even deeper. I hope you enjoy this episode. I really, really did. Oh my goodness. I've got Rachel Harris in the house. Um, Oh, Rachel, thank you so much for coming on my show. Thanks for having me. Um, well, this is Shed Quarters to Shed Quarters Communication. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I think your shed looks a little better than mine, but it's. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm talking about it. So I don't know if you saw my post. I'm looking at getting something there. Maybe I need a, a neon light. A neon you know, light. You know. um, okay, Rachel Harris, just in case, just in case there's somebody out there that doesn't know who the heck Rachel Harris is. Tell us a little bit about yourself, please. Yeah, I would love to. So hi, everybody. Um, I, first of all, am a friend of Ashley's, most importantly for today. Um, I am a disruptor in the accounting industry. So I am disrupting what it means to be an accountant, what it feels like to have an accountant and what being an exceptional employer of accountants looks like. So I create completely free, accessible, consumable, long and short form content all over the internet. So YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And that is just me trying to break down the barriers to financial education for people who are starting a business, want to start their own practice, or are maybe trying to decide their own career path and think that being an accountant is for them. I share the behind the scenes, I share educational stuff, um, all of the juicy stuff, the real life in between. So over the last three years, I have rapidly scaled our practice from a one man band on our dining room table with 50 clients to We've just gone over 700 clients. We've just had our 18th job offer accepted and we are anticipating hitting a million pounds in turnover soon. Boom. My oh. goodness. And all of this, right? <laughs> and you're still in your 20s. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, are, you are incredible. Um, can I ask, right? We see you doing all kinds of stuff over the internet, not just for yourself as well, because I've seen you doing TikToks with other practices and, and stuff. Do you actually do any accounting yourself? Do you sit there and, and crunch numbers and do tax returns? No, no, do not. So I'm very, um, I was going to say I'm very lucky. I just had to stop myself because it's not luck. It's bloody hard work. It's, yeah, it's so, design. It's design, yeah. <laughs> January 2023 was actually the first January um, that I didn't, didn't file a tax return. So for two years, we've rapidly scaling the business. Obviously, like, it's very much an all, all hands on deck situation but yeah we've just had our 18th job offer accepted and so James and I are completely removed from the day-to-day -day running of the practice um, I have a very very strategic role within the business so I have Accountant She which is my online personal brand which is a six-figure business in itself and like every single month I share how much money I make as a content creator so I've got Accountant She we've got Strivex Accountants just launched launched Strivex Mortgages and then Strivex Audit is launching in September 2023 and within the practice I do a lot of high level consultancy work with businesses who have just come off or are about to go on shows like Dragon's Den so I do a lot of very strategic high level um, valuation work within there but yeah in the day-to-day -day practice I James and I are both completely removed. That is fantastic so when did you when did you know realize think that that's what you had to do? Yeah pre pretty early on so I run the business with my husband, James, um, and if there's anyone listening that's considering it, I am sponsored by, uh, you know, running your business with your life partner and being life partners and business partners. It's definitely the best thing I've ever, ever done in my whole life. Um, and yeah, pretty early on. So James and I actually met at work. We trained at a top 75 practice and so very much understood what it looks like to deliver service at a very, very high standard. But we wanted to deliver that high standard, but with the approachability of a very small practice. And so we knew that we wanted to scale from the word go. And we basically on the inside 
almost internally franchised our business model so that every single thing start to finish was scalable within the first six months of our practice so that from that point onwards there's been no no like friction in the traction that we've gained and we have been able to scale from like zero to 700 within three years and you can probably tell by the speed i'm talking we have no plans of slowing that down and so yeah it was really important for us to to build that and actually understand that that's not about you know me sitting on a beach half the time i, I share my daily schedules on the internet where i get up at five and normally i'm working oh, no. <laughs> but like it's not about stepping back to do nothing it's about stepping back to create more impact and so i can create more impact to every single one of my clients by actually on a day-to-day -day basis not having anything to do with them yeah no absolutely um lee's just um oh, admiring, he's admiring your your amazing neon um okay so you do all social medias just the like second one we do, yeah, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, YouTube, long and short form. We're a content machine. Content machine. Okay. Yeah. And and did was that how you planned it right from the day day one? Yeah. So and, and this is what's really interesting, especially in LinkedIn land, because I feel like sometimes LinkedIn land doesn't understand the other platforms. And uh, I spoke about this at Account this year. We were talking about social media. We did the big content creation clinic. And so many people would look at hi there uh, so many people would look at what we do online and think that it's accidental sloppy you know like random that you're just putting out this content and i have accountant sheet behind me and led lights but what i should have behind me is intention like intentional every single thing that we do is strategic intentional i better than anybody in our industry understand market segmentation positioning audience understanding who my audience is how they behave where they consume content what times of day they consume content who they are how they behave and how they spend money and every single part of the content that we do on every single platform is intentional planned prepared this year we had a piece of content which completely blew up it literally reached like 10 million people and resulted in a tv appearance for me and you could have consumed that content and thought that the thing i was talking about happened yesterday and my rule on social media is that i share scars not open wounds and the thing that i was talking about actually was decided in a board meeting that now that 12 months had passed, it was appropriate to talk about it. We had the client's consent. We'd actually worked with AAT and ACCA's internal standards team and asked them to review the tax work that we did before we were willing to talk about it online. And I think that is a misconception with how intentional and strategic content is. So as well as being an accountant, I qualified and then went on to do an MBA, which is a master's in business. And so that intentionality and that strategic approach, that's definitely where that came from. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, you're you're blowing my tiny mind here, <laughs> and and all this from an accountant, and 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 that's the thing. See, you're you're an amazing accountant. You've built this amazing business, but you're also absolutely smashing it on LinkedIn. And I love the way you say it's all intentional. Yeah. So, what are the key things for people listening? What what should they be thinking about with their social media? I'd say, so the most common conversation I have around social media is around normally because of what I do, video content is probably on a spectrum of comfortable to uncomfortable. For most people, video content is there. And so that conversation is a conversation that I have a lot with people. It was the reason behind the content creation clinic. Lots of people at Accountex um, were coming up to us sort of asking what I'm selling and asking if I was like a digital marketing agency. And I was literally there to give. I like my core value is that you don't become poor by giving and so i literally was there to donate my time to just teach and show other people how to do it and to empower them to do it in a room of ten thousand people so that when they're at home and they're shared they're thinking oh yeah i can do that so the most common conversation is usually about like how to get out of your own way and how to just do the content and the thing about strategic personal branding is that it's not about you Accountant she and my personal brand is not about me. It's about the people that I'm serving. It's about the content I'm creating. It's about the impact that I'm generating. And I'm a very, I am a very giving person. And so to me, that's why I bloody hop out of bed at 5 a.m. It's not about me. It's about other people. And it's about our community's just gone over 32,000 people for the first time. And 
that's that's what it's about it's about launching a bursary scheme like it's the opportunities that you can bring with that and it is not about you in the slightest so however uncomfortable that feels it's probably because you're looking in a mirror rather than looking at your end goal or your audience what's your end goal or oh, good question so yeah i have a north star there's a couple of things that i've done in my career so far that i was the first person to do it but did it in the hope that i wouldn't be the last so i have a bursary scheme that was the first ever corporate bursary scheme to like hit hit the world and so every single year i get to pick a recipient that i put through aat so that's all three years of aat i work with them on a one-to-one -one mentorship basis and so my plan is to really really grow and scale that and and you know, generate more impact we said before we came online i was a free school meal kid and so a lot of what i do is how can i target rachel like i'm just trying to find and build more rachels um and be the person that i needed that could that i couldn't see so end goal is much more tv work we've got some really really exciting things in the pipeline at the moment and so working with businesses that are about to go on or who have just come off shows like dragon's den is definitely where i see my future uh, on my vision board, I have myself superimposed in a pink suit on the lineup of Dragon's Den. Um, so that'll give you the vibes of my vision board. Um, but yeah, like that's, you know, I feel like that's my place. That's, that is somewhere that, and it's not about me, right? That, that is a position I can hold that generates and derives the most impact for the people that I absolutely love to serve. And those people are business owners, people who aren't taught this stuff at school and people who desperately need it and can't pay for it. And so that's free. Yeah. North Star. Absolutely fantastic. Who inspires you, Rachel? Oh, um, previous Rachel. When I needed it, it didn't exist. And I believe as young people, specifically for me as a young woman, there was this intrinsic rule in my head that I could only be what I can see. And so... That's why it is my goal to be everywhere and to be seen by as many people as possible because I'm doing the things that I thought were impossible because I couldn't see anybody else doing it. And so, yeah, changing that stereotype. Like we've had some really insane pinch me full circle moments. So we actually now have two members of our team decided to become accountants because they found me on YouTube. And then one came to us for work experience and we hired her one Emma Howell actually went away, got work experience somewhere else, and then we hired her. But I now have like qualified accountants who work for me who literally decided to be an accountant because they consume my content online. And that is, you know, that that's the stuff that no one can ever take away from you. Yeah. Uh, and that's the stuff that drives me for sure. I, I, I totally get that. That, that you, you can't buy that, can you? Yeah. You, you cannot yeah. buy that. I'm going to quickly go to... Um, the um, comments here a second. And if anyone's got a question for Rachel, please put it in the chat box. Uh, Lee's saying such a refreshing approach. Um, Sharon saying she loves your approach to business. Uh, we've got Manish saying video content is awesome. <laughs> Supporting AAT students is great. And Lee said mic drop moment. And I, and I think you, you just personify this amazing um, vision and I, i'm so pleased you shared your north star and, and and that and i can see you being on dragon's den most definitely yeah absolutely you'll be on dragon's den and 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 i think that's the thing isn't it we we look at people doing amazing things and think oh that's never going to happen to me i'm not going to do that um just not in case that, it doesn't it <laughs> no absolutely absolutely and and you're smashing this you're just turning around and going right I'm just, going to, I'm just going to have a go and I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And, and it, it, the word intentional is what I'm going to take away from this yeah. today is because you are absolutely intentional. Um, and that's, that's the thing, right? Like if you have a North Star, when you do things online, when you have a massive community, when you, you know, put out all of this content, opportunities start coming to you. Yeah. And that's a champagne problem, you know, but it is a problem in that all of these opportunities will come to you like coming on shows like this and you have to have a, a, a filtering process to understand what to say yes to and what to say no to because i could easily say yes to everything and fill my entire working week and be busy all the time but i'm not getting anywhere closer to my north star and so that north star for me is a filtering process 
there's not one thing on my north tower by the way it's this entire vision board of like lovely wholesome amazing things including bbc news all the way through to like being female martin lewis and it's full of all of these things and so any opportunity that i get if it's paid for great cash can help me get closer to my north star if it's not paid okay which one of these does this fall into and how does that help me understand what to say yes to and what to say no to that momentum and the momentum that's happened within our our business every area of our business comes from you don't just land at 100 percent. it's doing one percent for 100 days and that momentum comes and it's about i don't need to tell you because this is the linkedin show but it's about doing it when no one's watching because then all of a sudden i was just saying before we came on tonight i'm going out for dinner with someone from love island i'm going on a podcast this afternoon that isn't luck <laughs> conveniently i am luckier in direct correlation with how hard I work. And that stuff doesn't just happen. That's Rachel three years ago, doing it when no one was watching. And suddenly there is a platform where 33,000 people are watching. Yeah, that is, I, um, it was, I think it was Arnold Palmer that said that. Someone said, oh, you're amazing at golf. And he said, it's funny, isn't it? No, and he said, you're, you're lucky. You're really lucky, it was a lucky shot. And he said, it's funny, isn't it? The harder I practice, the luckier I become. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, got, a, got a question from Lee. Do you try stuff to see what happens? I'm guessing this is um, uh, it could be it could be absolutely anything, um, but I'm guessing it's related to social media. Yeah. Do you try stuff to see what happens, or is every single thing a strategic decision with a defined outcome? What a great question. That is such a good question, and I, I was asked a similar question the other day, which was, how do you make sure that your content is strategic but responsive and agile at the same time? Right. So if there's a trend. How do you jump on a trend while at the same time knowing what you're posting tomorrow? Great question, very, very similar. And so there are two parts to this. One is the one that all of the accountants love, which is planning, preparing, having content pillars. So for me, and it's worth saying, when I started, I had one goal, one audience on one platform. I created content on Instagram to attract new work into my business. That was it. I'm now on multiple platforms with multiple pillars. And now my content pillars look like accounting students or people who might want to become accounting students, business owners and accountants with their own practice. I have three content pillars across all platforms. And that's how I understand what content to make, when to make it and how to do it. With in mind, that content and that educational content where you see me talking to a camera and saying three ways to save corporation tax in 2023, that stuff only lands if people know, like, and trust who I am. And so I need to sprinkle on top of that real stuff, hard stuff, honest stuff, um, like the real life and the reality behind running a business because it's not easy. And people in 2023 don't want the polished version. The polished version of me is not relatable. I'm here today in a t-shirt with no makeup on because I'm doing a podcast this afternoon. And that's fine. That's who I am. It's real life. I'm not the polished version all of the time. And so there is strategic combined with truth and honesty and transparency. And again, that is very much for me fed into, that's what I needed when I was a young person. I desperately think it's what young people need now is honesty on social media and transparency that it's not easy and it's not overnight, but you can do it and you can be a great person. You can build something that fundamentally makes you a lot of money and that that's okay. So it's strategy in content pillars, I, at any given time, will have content planned for like 12 months in advance, long form, short form, talk to camera, all of that stuff. But what that means is that when a trend comes in, that moves down, the time sensitive stuff stays the same, everything else moves down, and I can jump and hop on that trend. But then you, the audience, are thinking, how is she doing it? And the reality is like, we are planning, filming, editing content. I have three full-time people who support my role in various capacities, but like, that is the reality. And the reality three years ago was it was me on my phone at 9 p.m. getting stressed and thinking social media isn't a job, so I can't do it during working hours. And so it is strategy combined with agility, but fundamentally being being who you are um, within the close knit content team. We uh, trial and test quite a lot. And so we will test new content and then every single on a week and monthly basis. We are understanding, measuring, and reporting back how different content works, whether that's, you know, virality combined with engagement rates, like really how people are engaging with that content to then learn, inform, and dictate, you know, permanent series that you will be used to seeing on my 
social media channel like what I spent this week business owner edition that one consistently does really really well because people are really nosy uh, and so that one does really well and but that came from testing trialing it learning and redoing exactly the same thing wow wow and, and, and this this is the thing right so um just thinking of the tennis because we saw the, the the men's single final yeah. at, at the weekend what a match I don't know if you saw it no, yeah um and and they got a bucket load of prize money, but but I said to my wife, I said they've got lots of people supporting them, and and that's that's exactly like you, isn't it? You know, they've got they've got a fitness coach, they've got a you know a coach coach, they've got a mindfulness coach, a, a, a dietitian, and all those other people, and and once you're building your what you're building you can now employ these people to support you. So you can do all, you, you know, you can get on court and hit the ball around, yeah. but you've got everybody else doing, doing other stuff. And I think that's, that's key, isn't it? It's, it's how you're scaling and, and doing so well. And even that, like talking about the fact that I have help. So I, we spoke about it briefly before we came on, I'm actually profoundly deaf. And so for a really long time, editing my own content was like actually cripplingly difficult for me for many reasons, but like mainly because I, uh, sound editing almost impossible for me other than based on sight on like sound bars um and so talking about the fact to have a team around me I literally set myself the I literally set myself the goal of getting to a following across platforms of 20,000 people before I hired someone and then hired someone um I literally from content creation have you know I've covered her salary I've covered her salary within like two months of her being here in terms of sponsorship deals that I'm able to get YouTube revenue TikTok sponsorship in Instagram stuff um I do have a YouTube video on how much money I make as a content creator so if anyone's really nosy definitely watch that but uh it's it's quite easy to monetize this stuff and as accountants you're probably thinking oh non-chargeable people in the world, <laughs> like, in the and so you can you, know, you can make it chargeable I <laughs> it feels bigger than her salary and so you can do it but for me talking about the fact that I have help and making sure that nobody's looking at me on all platforms doing all things and thinking that it's me myself for a long time it was and it was really difficult and my advice would be higher before I did because it was it, it was a lot um but yeah so Lee also just said side point I now put subtitles in almost all of my videos because of the post that you shared so thank you for that too thanks Lee that means yeah and 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 that that that's the thing is is I, I talk about um, subtitles as well or, or closed captions because there's so many people out there in your position. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, and and what I love about you and and and, and everybody here is going to agree is you are authentic. You've said transparent and open, but you're just so authentic. When I first met you, it was up at the Countex and you were exactly the same in real life as what you were on the screen in the videos that I've seen. And, you know, having a chat with you today, it, it, it's, it's exactly what we see. But now and again, and I love I love the term you used, um, sharing the scars, not the open wounds, mm. um, because I think one of the first uh, big moments that, that I saw that you sharing was when you're you would you're hearing and you'd find out that it had gone worse you just want to just tell us a little bit about um yeah, where, 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 where you are on, where you are on that journey yep so i've been self-employed for three years and in 2021 so after a year of self-employment i had a routine operation on the nhs to improve my hearing and it it failed and i lost nearly all of my hearing so i'm now profoundly deaf i speak like a hearing person because that's how i learned to speak was with my hearing and so people can't even hear that I'm deaf. Um, I have an amazing team. I have an amazing husband. But yeah, for me, that was a, I had to share that when it was a scar, not a wound, because as you can imagine, it was quite a catastrophic thing mm -hmm. to happen to you. Mm -hmm. and, but for me, again, it's learning about how I can impact the most people with that story. And so rather than talking about it online, I actually privately approached the National Deaf Children's Society and said, what can I do? I'm a content creator who runs a business in accounting and finance. What content can I create and share that will impact the most deaf children to show them that actually finance is hugely accessible as a career? And like, I learned that just myself fumbling around on the internet, trying to work out how to get subtitles on my laptop. Like it is so accessible. What can I put me to use? And so that's where my brain went and my time went is this isn't for nothing every struggle I've ever had in my whole life is just 
you will get to a situation in your life where you look back and you realize that all of the stepping stones are in a straight line and they led you to that moment and so for me yeah I could sit and be sad about it probably for the rest of my life it's quite sad but actually what are you doing with that it it stops with me that feeling stops with me and like how can I use it to just Make sure people like leave subtitles on their content so that someone who is deaf or hard of hearing or actually is just sat with no sound next to their wife in bed watching LinkedIn because they can't sleep. You know, how can I make sure that people can access all of the con like all pieces of content in all ways? And creating content is hard for us as content creators um, or business owners. It It's hard. You should make sure that the most people are able to consume it. And so subtitles is a great way of doing that, too. No, absolutely amazing. Um it's 15 minutes behind the profile here and, and, we're, and we, we've we I, I, could, I, 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 I know don't tell anybody I could talk to you for absolutely hours um so I had somebody on my workshop this week who is an accountant and she turned around to me and said yeah but do accountants really get business from doing stuff on LinkedIn Oh. <laughs> and I said, of course they do. Oh, my goodness. Yes, they do. So come on, tell us, do you get business from any of the social media that you do? Any of the social media? OK, uh, I feel like we're all accountants. So I'm just going to like spit some spit some numbers at you. Um, when I say that my personal brand generates £100,000 a year or six figures plus, that doesn't include the value of work that gets brought into our practice. So I count that within the practice. So that six figure business is completely separate. And that is its own thing. What gets brought into the business, we bring, on average, we quote about £110,000 of new work into our business every single month. And I have an 85% conversion rate. So that's every single month. 80% um, of those people come from social media. 20% are come from referrals, happy clients, and other sources. Again, that 80%, very often 80% of people say, oh, I follow you on LinkedIn or I follow you on Instagram. And actually, when I talk to them, it's, oh, I saw one of your clients talking about you and then followed you on Instagram and then came through. So I sometimes have to like dig a bit further. Like they say Instagram because that's how they booked, but actually it's a conversation that they had sometimes two years ago because what I do is, you know, they can consume it and they can be there and they can get like, they can get value from it for free. Actually they can stay there for a really long time. And it could be like two years ago, they spoke to somebody who said, you should definitely follow this girl. Um, she's just dancing around on the internet. And I'm there like, it's intentional. And then, then <laughs> a few years later, she becomes a client. Um, so 80% of people that book with us cite social media as a reason. And again, that's 110,000 pounds a month. That is incredible. Right. Biggest problem that I see with, um it's not just accountants and bookkeepers it's it's across the whole spectrum but definitely accountants and bookkeepers is recruitment <laughs> um do you find that social media helps you with your recruitment rachel that was a very nice segue ashley thank you very much um yeah so this morning i had our 99th applicant join our employee waiting list so it's really hard to recruit right now. Uh, over the last three years, we've just had our 18th job offer accepted. We've never used a recruitment agent. Creating social media content does lots of things, but I think even like pound for pound, <laughs> um, having not paid a recruitment fee with 18 full-time members of staff um, is, is crazy. From anybody that we have ever hired from our employee waiting list, we have a 100% staff retention rate, which is mind blowing like literally mind blown. And it's down to a couple of things. It's not just social media, but a lot of it is using social media to convey things that are happening in real life. So core values, benefits package. I am not about like, imagine if I built this really great personal brand about like values and quality and just being a great person. And I was like, ah, oh, yeah, the apprenticeship minimum wage in you go. Like that's obviously not who I am. And so for me, it is social media, but for me, it's my reality on social media. And so our benefits package is chef's kiss. Um, we offer, you know, we pay 10% above the going rate for any role. We go on an all-inclusive holiday to Mallorca every single year, all expenses paid. We have private medical, we pay for their gym memberships, like you name it, we do it. Everyone has access to unlimited amounts of therapy for them and members of their family. I don't just want them at work. I want them happy, well, and safe at work. We have flexible working, hybrid working, work from anywhere and yeah so we have 99 people uh, on our employee waiting list that's how we hire that's how we recruit that comes from storytelling storytelling on social media storytelling the real life behind the business we have long and short form content where people 
if someone applies for a job, I can literally pick a 25 minute YouTube 25 minute long YouTube video of somebody who does their role now and say, watch this video of Emma Howell. It's a day in her life. Do you want one where someone's working from home or do you want one where someone's in the office? So you can see the difference and how they work. It, it blows my mind. And like even that has cost associated with it, right? So people say to us, why do you take everyone to Mallorca on an all-inclusive, all-expenses-paid holiday every year? It costs like nine grand to take people, to take to take 15 people on holiday. I am guarantee people have paid more than that in recruitment fees this year. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Just, yeah. Another another mic drop. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I I read it somewhere that eighty percent of people hate their job. Yeah, they obviously haven't spoken to your team. Yeah, and that's and that and that's the thing. So, <laughs> so so eighty percent of people hate their job. They're going in. So if someone turns around and goes, "Oh, come and work for me. It's better the way you are," they're going to hop. Yeah, and yeah. I would also say even scarier than that, we have someone who we've who is an employee now, when she was on the waiting list and when we interviewed her, I said to her, why are you looking to leave your current job? And she said, I'm not. But I'll come with you. That's even worse. No, <laughs> so, I, pressure. No, so, so look, I love being my own boss. I love being self-employed, but I want to come and work for you. <laughs> it would be an absolute blast. Yeah. Um, we've got to say goodbye, which is horrible. Which is really, really horrible. Thank you to everybody for all of the questions. I've got one more question for you, which which is the only one that is on that list that I sent you because you, you're just you're just lovely to talk to. Um, but before we do that, I just want to give a shout out to my guest next week. I've got Tracy Irwin on, and she's just written a book, um, and she is um, lovely too. So I can't wait to have a chat with her. Um, Rachel, you've been a delight. My last question to you is: When you were at primary school, okay. All right. When you're at primary school, what did you want to be when you grew up? All right. I'm really excited because I feel like in many ways I have made this come true. When I was in primary school, I wanted to be Baby Spice when I grew up. And I feel like that's my vibe. That's my energy. I feel like in many ways I have completed. I'm the hybrid mashup between Baby Spice and Elle Woods in accounting. That, that's me. That's my personal brand. Oh, a lovely way to end the show. <laughs> Rachel Harris. Thank you so much. Um, one, I've got one more question. Will you come back? Will you come back? Yeah, of course, if you have me back. I, of course I will. Of course I will. Thank you very much, Rachel. Thanks, everybody else. And we'll see you next week. Cheerio. Bye-bye. Here we go. Another podcast in the bag. I've been Ashley Leeds. You've been wonderful. Thank you so much for listening. If you want to hear more, then please subscribe. And I will see you again another day. You can find me on LinkedIn if you want to catch up. If you fancy being a guest on one of my shows, I do live shows on LinkedIn twice a week. But I also plan to do some real podcasts uh, where we just do audio and probably record it to go on the YouTube channel. And we can talk about absolutely anything in those. So whatever you want to do, get in touch. And thank you for listening. You get out what you put in. Never going to lose, never going to win. As long as you're happy, you're always going to grin. You get out what you put in.